Hello and welcome to 3D Power Prints. Today we'll be looking at the Wanhao D9 MK3. This exciting new large 3D printer has absolutely amazing features on paper. And we're going to be looking whether this printer actually can do all that it says. Because no one wants their 3D printer damaged during shipping, the packaging is also going to be getting a rating. And after five days of shipping, this absolutely massive box arrived on my front porch. Here's a standard hammer for some scale. And the packaging inside was fairly good. The foam held everything in place, but after further inspection, that smaller box holds the 3D printer components was not ideal and kind of thrown around. Overall, this printer will receive a seven out of 10 for packaging. Is the D9's assembly timely or terrible? Let's find out. First off, this assembly pamphlet came with it, and at first glance, everything looks good. It has pictures at every step to lead you on the way, but something wasn't right. Not everything looked the same, and after a quick look, you can see that this is actually the Mark II assembly pamphlet, and I have the Mark III 3D printer. That means they are sending old pamphlets with new 3D printers. This is something that should definitely be fixed on one house and as soon as possible. Onto the actual assembly, it was fairly quick for the size of this large format 3D printer. If you are assembling this yourself, make sure you do not mistake this heating element as part of the packaging. It is not. It may look like duct tape on the bottom of the print bed, but it is definitely not something to remove. It looks like it could, but do not remove this. So after all this, the Duplicator 9 will receive a 7.5 out of 10 for the assembly because it was pretty quick and pretty easy, but some things were just easier to follow on a video and the pamphlet was obviously old. Why would you buy a 3D printer? Well, to print with it. And the Wanhao D9 has a very unique 3D printing situation. This bench you can see on this one and this one also shows you that the layers can be easily viewed, which is not necessarily a good thing. And even further, at full blast from those fans, it still isn't enough. The fans should be repositioned and not where they currently are. You can also see the layers on this are very distinct and kind of wavy, which leads me to believe there's vibrations. This, with the, with the fans at full blast, is a normal temperature of 205 degrees, yet it looks like it just went through a volcano. But occasionally you'll get some things like this, which actually print amazing. And why is that? Well, this vase is absolutely huge, just like the 3D printer, but vases on the Wanhao are absolutely stunning. It looks great and you can see the detail in every single corner. This is the turning point for the Wanhao D9, the Golden Benchy. It printed very good in comparison with Little Ghosting and the reason because it was printed slower. I printed it at 30 to 40 millimeters per second, and despite the slightly longer time, it was well worth the wait compared to earlier. Everything turned out better, the vibrations were minimized, and just like this face, the gold shows it off. I will be giving it a 6.5 out of 10, mainly because the extruder, but this number, while it may seem harsh, is still showing that this is a good 3D printer. You can still have the size, you can still have the solid printing aspect of it, but things just might need to have a small modifications to it. Now moving on to some problems and issues and solutions. This is the initial print that you're supposed to print on the D9 and word of advice, do not use that cheap filament that they send with it. It will just clog up the nozzle and it will be ground to absolute shreds inside the extruder. Remember those benchies from earlier? Well, you can also see that any filament you put in it will be ground up, which is why I took the part of the extruder to find the bottom of this problem. And as suspected, it was the stepper motor and the gear. So after looking at that, you can see that the linear rails, people are saying you can replace them or make modifications, but some of those wavy lines in the benches could be because how the printer was built itself. Despite those thoughts, you can actually see it rolls nicely and the belts are fairly tight. Moving on to the touchscreen hardware and print bed itself, you can see that it does have some occasional errors, which is expected of any machine. But first of all, why is there a bed heat fail? This shouldn't happen. It only happened once, and after restarting it, like it said, it did fix it. This did happen for the extruder, but that was my fault. I did not have it all the way plugged in. So if you ever see that, 
just know it's okay. And also see that you can see how the nozzle is crashing into the print bed as you move across. Now this is not okay. And note, despite it leveling with that genuine BL touch, it still crashes right into it. And so what I did is I put a polycarbonate or a glass sheet on top of it and clipped it on with binder clips. So when doing this, you can see that it won't actually press into it too much because it's a harder surface than the build tack, which will absolutely just get melted or ripped. And so on this D9, it's also slightly unlevel and because of the leveling problems, you can put tape to level it all out. This shouldn't be a normal 3D printer problem and it was most likely mine, but just so you know, it still is something out there. Should you buy this 3D printer? Well, while it did receive a 6.5 out of 10, I would still say this one how 3D printer should have some modifications to it. And as long as you're a hobbyist and just willing to put in a little bit more work than normal, this could be a great printer. I'm planning on putting the Flexion extruder onto this and building my own custom housing for the actual extruder. So what this will allow me to do is have way more control, less grinding, and just attach it onto this part on the top and just completely redesign the extruder. Now keep tuned for my next video where I put on the Flexion on the Wanhao and let's see how the results turn out. Did you like this video? Well, please subscribe and like so you can find out what happens with the Flexion on the Wanhao and find out about other honest reviews of 3D printers and machinery.